Okay, and we're going. Okay. Now, this is going to be quite the stroll down memory lane for most of you. Uh, a lot of review. It's all review, actually. And uh, probably some stuff that you're going, man, I used to know that. I used to know that. Okay. So, uh, if you find today that you are forgetting a lot of stuff and you're really confused and you don't remember all this stuff, then you're probably normal. Okay? And then you're probably going to have to, I don't know, we are out of desks. That is something else I need to talk to you guys about. Okay? But obviously I don't, I want to get through the lesson. Now the first thing we're going to do is work on functions and relations. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about is a polynomial function. You with me here, guys? Okay. Now, I want you to grab a seat at the back there because then you can even have a table. Yeah. Now, the what is a polynomial function? Okay. It is something that always has. whole numbers as the exponents. Okay? That's the first thing. And always has a number in front of the term. Now, if there isn't a number there, then that's implied that there's the number 1. Okay? So, all of your a's are going to be real numbers, and all of the exponents will be natural numbers. Or sorry, whole numbers. So whole numbers again are your 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 right? Those are your whole numbers. Okay. So let's just do a simple question. Now, in this example right here, what is the degree of it? Remember, you used to know how to do this. What was the degree of this polynomial? Hard to hear with everyone talking at once. I need some way to the highest exponent. Very good. Which is for the leading coefficient is eight. Huh? It's not eight. It's not seven. It's not five. You guys are running out of numbers here. It is 1. And the constant term is 5. Okay? Now, some of you right now are going, well, I, I, this doesn't make sense. Okay? So the first thing you should always do is write this thing out in order. And I always write it in order of degree. Minus 8x squared plus 5. See, once it's in the right order, this answers the two first questions. The degree is the highest one. And the leading coefficient is the number that goes with it. So that's how we got this. And that's how we got this. And the 5, well, that's the easy one. That's how we get that. Now, Remember, the diploma is going to have easy questions, medium questions, and hard questions on it. The easy questions are, did they show up for class? Now, if you were making a test, what would be a multiple choice that you would put as the degree that would get many people that weren't in class? What would be the degree? You'd have to make you have to make a dis, you have to make another question. It's going to drag people that weren't in class. What would you put as the degree? Okay, maybe the leading coefficient. What would you put? I'd put seven. And what would my degree be? Come on, I want to grab people that di don't really know this stuff. The degree they would pick would be three. 
they pick degree three, leading coefficient of seven, and closet term five. Okay, and that's going to get those students that obviously didn't show up for class. Now remember, when you're doing a study sheet, is this something you want to put down on there? It's pretty small. Write that example, put degree four, leading coefficient one, constant five, that's on there. Remember, when you look at that study sheet in five months from now, it's all going to come back to you like that. Okay, so anything you don't have on a study sheet, and again, you don't have to do that now, but maybe right after we're done the notes. Now, we're going to talk about a bunch of functions. Now, the first term is called a linear function, because a linear function creates what type of thing on a graph? A line. Okay, now obviously that's not the most creative name in the world, because it gives away what it is. A linear function creates a line. Now, here are two examples of linear functions, y equals 3x plus 1 and y equals 5. Now, how do you graph y equals 3x plus 1 on a grid? You don't get to use your calculator. You just get to use the evidence of the thing, you know, the stuff in 3x plus 1. Yep. Yeah, you could do that. You could make up some x's. Yep. Okay, good. This is the y-intercept. And this is the slope. So the y-intercept is 1, right? So I just have to put that there. Now remember, if you want to graph, you need to have a graph a line. You need two points. What is the other point. How do I find the other point? Um, nope. Rise over run, right? Because slope is 3 over 1. This is the rise this is the run. Now, because it's a positive 3, I'm going to go up 3. If it was negative 3 over 1, I would go down 3. The run, I will always go right. Never go left. So, up, down, and right. So, this is going to say I'm going to go up 3. 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Now, what is that point? What would it be? Up 3 over 1. No. 1 comma 4, right? Again, we do want to say 4, 1, but remember, x always comes first. Okay, what would be the domain of this? Yes, the diploma loves domain and range. Every single question, domain and range, domain and range, domain and range, right? So we might as well get used to it. The more we avoid it, the more, the more you're going to have troubles with it on the diploma. What's the domain of this line? Yep. No. What X's are on this graph? All of them. What y's are on this graph? All of them. Okay. Let's do y equals 5. What's the x-intercept? or the y -intercept? No. Y-intercept is 5, right? What's the slope? 0, right? There is no slope. Now, people always get messed up. Like, if there is no slope. Now, I just want you to, if you say we're going to hit the slopes, what does that mean? You're going skiing, right? What is the most boring slope in the world if you're, if you're going skiing? Flat one, right? 
Yeah, cross country skiing. What can be worse than that, eh? So remember, a slope of zero is flat. Because some people think is it straight up and down, and believe me, that's not a boring hill. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. What's the domain of this? X is in the reals. What's the range? Y equals 5. Good. Now, remember, this can be written like this, too. And people get all freaked out about this. Y equals 5 slash Y. Or actually, no, they, they can just say right after comma, Y is in the reals. People are like, huh? What? I thought it was like, oh, I should have a squiggly. People are thinking, what? You just said Y equals 5, and then you say Y equals in the reals? No, you're basically saying Y equals 5, and 5's in the reals. Um, it, it sounds like it's being redundant, but the first one has to stand as you use the second one. Okay, quadratic functions. Okay, what shape do they always make? Always. Yes. Hmm? Parabola. Good. Okay. So the quadratic functions always make a parabola. Okay. That's these things. Now, it'll always come in two forms. There's the general form which is just ax squared plus bx plus c, and then there's the standard form, a equals x minus p squared plus q. What's pq? No. Who said that? Yes. Vertex. Okay. Now, how do you get from general form to standard form? Think back. Think about what you enjoyed the most last year, and you'll, what will come to your mind will be completing the square. Some people are like, what does that mean? Trust me, we did lots of them. Okay, and we're going to do one today. Now, what we're going to do is let's dust off the old graphing calculator and let's do some graphing. Okay, so get this in. Y equals X squared minus 3X minus 18. All I did was hit the Y equals button for people that I've lost already. I guess those people that had physics last semester, they've been using their graphing calculator. So. Okay, and then hit zoom 6. So we're all looking at the same picture. Okay, now students always ask me, Mr. how do you get, like, so you can see it all, right? And so they want some magic formula, and there isn't. Okay, you have to look at it. And what can I not see? The vertex. It's pretty important. Can't see the y intercept either. That's also very important. Now, how do I see more down? Windows. Which one? Y min. Now, what should I change it to? Negative 20? People are always like, negative 500. Okay, there's sometimes there's too much. Okay, so you hit graph. And you can see we need just a bit more. So we should be hitting, again, don't go to minus 500 again. We're getting close. Minus, let's do 30, okay? Because at least I don't have to keep going back and forth, okay? So now this is a good picture. Why? Because it has my x-intercepts, my y-intercepts, and my Vertex. This is also called a, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, 
called a sounds like spin a minimum it's a minimum yes okay so draw this on the side unless you have a smart board all you have to do is like this which is awesome okay now this thing here is called X intercept or a zero oh nice or a come on you can do it some of you look like you're in a lot of pain out there huh oh I thought I heard it a zero and X intercept a Anyone even scared to take a guess? Oh, wait, wait till we get to the hard stuff. Okay, so it is called a zero or an X int or a ah, a root. People like root? Yes, roots. X intercepts is the same thing as zeros, the same thing as roots okay again another nifty little thing to have on your study sheet okay now how do we find them anyone member uh, with our graphic calculator we will get to that don't you worry second trace zero right or what I like to do because it is a lot easier is you go to your y equals hit y equals zero now you know what y equals five look like y equals zero is the same thing as the x-intercept or x-axis and a lot of people don't know that okay x-axis the same thing as y equals zero okay again a nice little thing to have on a study sheet so then I hit graph again and you won't see it because it's on the X but then I can hit which one of these now intersect and then it is a lot easier because all you have to do is get over there and hit what enter three times right okay so negative three zero is this one okay the other one I'm gonna hit second trace again and intersect and I'm just gonna head over there now the closer you get to it the more accurate an answer it is and it's not that it's so far off but people are getting I love this question people come up they're getting 2.9999999999999 they come up and they go Mr. Rose, is this like three because it says three in the back of the book I said yeah it's, it's pretty close okay okay so this gives me six zero now you may if you do we're really far apart you'll get 5.99999 and 0 0.00000000008 okay that's still zero okay so we get six zero is the other one okay so what are the x-intercepts let's answer I that is three comma six those are the x-intercepts now how do you find the y-intercept no nope. easiest thing to do no nope. all you hit is trace zero enter so what is that point there hmm zero negative 18 right people and we all do it I'm looking for the y-intercept so I'm going to put that first so they put negative 18 zero and you can see when you do substitutions later and everything how much that messes you up okay now I have found that now zero or sorry, y-intercepts just negative 18. Um, 
The next thing is the vertex. Now, if you go here and you hit second trace, there is no vertex. But vertex on here would be the minimum. Okay? It is the smallest value on this. Whenever you're doing quadratics, there will be a maximum or a minimum. So all you have to do is get to the left side, right, hits the left bound. And again, the closer you are, it, the better answer it gives. And you get this. 1.5000011, right? So we can safely assume that's 1.5 and negative 20.25. So 1.5 and negative 20.25. Now, the back of the book, or whatever, will most likely have this infraction. So how do you do that infraction? You just get out of here. You can see I've already done it. But I'll show you how to do it. So you just go 1.5, math, enter, enter. It's 3 over 2. Negative 20.25, math, enter, enter. Negative 81 over 4. Okay? So this is 3 over 2, comma, negative 81 over 4. And remember, that's this point here. And that is the minimum. Now, how do I know... By looking at this equation, if it's going to have a maximum or a minimum. Right. If this is, this is a 1 here, right? So because it's positive, remember, positive, go up, negative, go down. Okay, so this would be a negative 3x squared. This would be a positive 3x squared. Okay, use factoring to find the zeros. Okay, now let's just write it down. x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals 0. Okay, now what I'm looking for are two things that add to negative 3 and multiply to negative 18. Now, what do we know about these two numbers? One's a negative, one's a positive. And I know the negative is the bigger one because it wins. It wins the addition race, right? It becomes a negative 3 in the end. So that's going to be the bigger number. Now, what are my numbers? Negative 6 and 3. Now, right away, people graphed it already. And I'm getting negative 3, 6, though. Is my, I'm doing something wrong here. Because they look at these two numbers, negative 6 and 3, but look what the roots are. They're negative 3 and 6. And it's because they're not done the factoring yet. But they still, they get a little bit jumpy, and they go, I'm getting opposite numbers of my answers. Well, because you're not done. This we have to write as x minus 6 times x plus 3 equals 0. What are my zeros? What will make this thing equal 0? If I put in a... 6 or negative 3, okay? So do you see how the zeros are the same thing as the x-intercepts? Not the two numbers that give you the equation. Okay? People get that mixed up with that all the time. Okay? Now C is rewrite this in the standard form. So rewrite the equation in standard form. Now, standard form is x minus p squared plus q. So, we first of all, let's write this out. x squared minus 3x minus 18. Now, the first thing you did, we are now going to learn, again, how to complete the square. First thing we always had to do was take out the number in front of the x squared term. So we looked at these two, just these two. Now, the number in front is a 1, so I'm going to go 1 times x squared minus 3x. And then I left a lot of space, and then I put minus 18. Now, how did I find those other two numbers? How 
How did I find him? Okay. The first thing you do is you take this turn. Divide it by 2. And then square it. And you'll get this term. So negative 3 divided by 2 squared would be 9 over 4. And then we minus 9 over 4. Remember that? Because I know I haven't changed my equation. Yep. To make it a perfect square. Um, so if I had x squared minus 6x, or actually plus 6x, and I needed this perfect square. What I do is I take this divided by 2, which is 3, and then that, then I square it. So this is the same thing as x plus 3 squared. Now I want you to see the middle term, the middle term will always be twice this one and will always be a square of that one. Because x plus 3 squared is the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 3. And if you square it, or you FOIL it, you're going to get x squared plus 3x plus, oops, plus 3x plus 9, which is x squared plus 6x plus 9. So x plus 3 squared you multiply by 2 to get this term, and you square to get this one. So the last one will always be 6 divided by 2 squared. Okay? Now, this turns into y equals 1 times x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4. Now remember, we had to kick this one out by multiplying this by the number in front. Do you remember that? When we kick it out in this case, it's going to stay minus 9 over 4 and the minus 18 are there. Okay? So I'm going to come up here because I'm out of room. Now, that's y equals 1 bracket. Now, x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4, it's going to be x minus, because there's a minus in front of the 3x. And remember, it's going to be 3 over 2 squared. Okay? And if you FOIL that out, you do get x squared minus 3x plus 9 over 4. And then the 9 over, negative 9 over 4 on the outside minus 18. If you just put that into your calculator and then hit math, enter, enter, you get minus 81 over 4. And remember, the vertex is supposed to be PQ. P is the number after the minus sign. It does not include the minus sign. Q is this entire number. So my vertex is 3 over 2, comma, negative 81 over 4. Just like I got by using my graphing calculator. Okay. Now, if you do the next one in your graphing calculator and round to the nearest hundredth, you will get negative 0 0.22 and 1.55. Those are your zeros. Now those numbers go on forever. If you try in your graphic calculator, they go on forever. That's your indicator that you're not going to be able to factor it using conventional means. We need to use the quadratic formula. Now it's on your sheet. Okay. Can anyone just say it to me? b squared, oops, negative b, plus or minus, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of review here. Now, if you look above, we want a label. So this is our... A. This is our, oops, this is our B, and this is our C. Do not ignore the sign in front. It is highly relevant. 
when you're doing these questions. Now, straight substitution using brackets. So, negative 4 plus or minus the square root of p squared, which is 4 squared minus 4 times a is negative 3 times c is 1. And that's all over 2 times negative 3. Okay, if we come up here, that gives me negative 4 plus or minus. You always want to do the stuff underneath the radical by itself. You don't go just shove this entire thing in the calculator. Over root 28 over negative 6. Okay, now if this is going to be your final answer, you'd obviously get it wrong. You need to, sim to simplify the radical as much as possible. Now, is there a perfect square in 28? What's two numbers that multiply up to 28? There's obviously 1 and 28. There's so 4 and 7, right? So this is the same thing as 4 times 7, correct? So the 4 comes out to become a 2, okay? So this is the same thing as negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 7 all over negative 6. Now, I'm going to take this and divide everybody by see there's three numbers out front so I can divide I'm going to divide everybody by negative 2 because I do not want a negative on the bottom You're not, never allow the neg a negative on the bottom in an answer so if I divide everybody by negative 2 then I will get 2 plus or minus root 7 all over 3 Hopefully you can see my three there. Maybe not the dude in red. And that's your final answer. Two plus root seven over three, and two minus root seven over three. And they will give you negative 0 0.22 and 1.55 like we got. It's all coming back to you, eh? Okay. A cubic function is a polynomial of degree 3. So we're always going to be looking for an x cubed. Now, they will often do a squiggle, but they always start in diagonal, start and end in diagonal quadrants. Now, if it's a positive a, it will always start in Where does it always start if you have a positive A? Starts in quadrant. Does everybody know their quadrants? It's one, two, three, and four. So where does the positive A always start? Quadrant 3 ends in quadrant 1. A negative A will always start in 2 and end in 4. Oops. Okay. Again, if you looked at your last year's study sheets, this would all be on there. We did all this last year. Now, this is, again, just for a cubic function. Now, if you graph this one, okay, we're not going to take time to go graph it. All you have to do is go find your zeros, and your zeros are 0 0.8, 2.0, and 5.2. Okay? So, again, I know we've already um, done review on how to find zeros, so I'm not going to waste any more time on that. Absolute value functions. Remember those? Okay? Now, an absolute value are these two things here that say, I'm going to make you positive. When you come out of here, you're going to be positive. Okay? So, absolute value of negative 20 is 20. The absolute value of 10 is 10. Okay? 
you do get people still that think the absolute value of 10 is negative 10. I go, why are you doing that? Well, absolute value is reverse of the signs. I'm like, whoever taught you that? Okay. They don't reverse signs. They make everything positive. Now, if x is greater than 0, then it's just x. So absolute value of 20. Well, it's 20. What's the absolute value of 80? It's 80. Okay. But what if x is less than 0? What computation do I have to do into my head to make it absolute? So negative 20. What do I got to do to make that thing absolute? What do you have to do to it? Add 40? Like, what are you doing? If I give you negative 20, what do you have to do to get that to equal 20? In your head. Some people could say, oh, I just dropped the, uh, the negative sign. Okay, sure. But what's the actual computation that's done? You have to multiply this by negative 1, or just by a negative, which means negative 1. So that's what this means. For anything less than 0, let's multiply this by a negative, and that'll make that absolute, okay? So if you just graph this, you'll get this, okay, and that's 2, because remember, absolute value of x is this absolute value of x. Oops. goes like that, right down here. What is, why is the, why did it go over 2? Because this is a horizontal translation, two units right. Do you remember doing that stuff? Okay, so anyway, what's the domain of this one? X is in the reals. What is the range? Greater or equal to zero. Okay, radical functions. Okay, now what do we know about this thing here? What are the rules of that entire thing? What do I know about 2, 2x minus 1? What do I know about it? What is it not allowed to be? Hmm? It can't be 1 over 2, because that will give you the answer 0. And you can take the square root of 0. It can't be negative. So it actually can't be greater than 1 over 2. Right? Cause, or Sorry, less than 1 over 2, because then it makes that a negative. So this has to be greater or equal to zero. So that's how I can figure out the domain of range. 2x minus 1 has to be greater or equal to zero. Do a little algebra here. Add 1. 2x has to be greater or equal to 1. Looks like the air conditioning is working awesome today. Eh? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x is greater or equal to one half. So x has to be greater than one half for this to actually work. Now, when I was doing these, so this step here, what if I had to divide by a negative two on both sides? Reverse the sign. Remember that? Okay, so say you had ne negative 3x is greater or equal to 6, and if I have to divide by negative 3, make sure you change that to 1x has to be less than or equal to negative 2. Again, if you looked at your study sheet from last year, that would be there. Anyway, this one turns out to be looking like this, and this is 1 half. So the domain of this x has to be greater or equal to 1 half. The range, y is greater or equal to 0. Okay.
let's talk about functional notation. Okay, now in functional notation, remember that f of x is, in this question, the same thing as x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now, let's do a. It says f of 2. Now, what that's saying is, can you take x and replace it with 2? Always make sure you do it in brackets. So this would be the same thing as 2 squared plus 4 times 2 plus 5. See, this is f of 2. If you see when it was f of x, we had x's in there. If it's f of 2, put 2's in there. Okay? And then you could do the math. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 8 is 12 plus 5. f of 2 equals 17. Now, do you see how b and c, they have 2's in them too. But they're in a different place. So if I put a 2 in front of the f of x, that means I don't want to substitute 2 in. I want to take f of x and multiply it all by 2. So I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to multiply it by f of x, which is x squared plus 4x plus 5. Does everyone see that? I just took f of x and multiplied it by 2. So that's going to give you 2x squared plus 8x plus 10. Now in C, what is C doing? I'm taking x and I'm going to replace it with 2x. So that would be the same thing as 2x squared plus 4 times 2x plus 5. So wherever there was an x, I replaced it with f of x. Which would be 4x squared plus 8x plus 5. Okay, D. Do you see how it's saying, take f of x, and what do I do with f of x? Just subtract 2 from it. So x squared plus 4x plus 5, I'm going to subtract 2 from it. Okay, and if you really want, you could have put that all in brackets. doesn't matter. And then you can drop the brackets, x squared plus 4x plus 3. Now, do you see how D and E are very different? Like, these are good questions to have beside each other. Because they're just a little bit different, but enough that you get a totally different outcome. Because this is saying takes x and replace it with x minus 2. So then you get x minus 2 squared plus 4x minus 2 plus 5. Now what do I have to do with the x minus 2 squared? What do I have to do to solve that? I have to... How do you solve this? Is it just x squared plus 4? Just remember, x minus 2 squared does not equal x squared plus 4. You have to FOIL it. Yeah, so make sure you FOIL it. So that's x minus 2 times x minus 2, right? That's what that means. So that is x squared minus 4x plus 4. And then I've got this one here. Make sure you distribute it. Plus 4x minus 8 plus 5. Okay, we got x squared. The negative 4x and 4x kill each other. And then I've got 4 minus 8 is negative 4 plus 5 is plus 1. Okay. Let's pretend we're on like a long car ride and we get little puzzles to do. Let's do some matching. Okay, f of x equals x cubed. Now the expression or the answer is x cubed plus 5. So on the right, which one of those is the proper notation? Which function notation would give you x cubed plus 5? 
3 because all I did was take the function and add 5. How about b? x plus 5 cubed. What got substituted? f of x turned into f of x plus 5, right? Okay, in C, what would give you 5 cubed? 4. What I don't like about this, they should have put brackets. But because it was a positive, they're like, we can get away with it. If, they, if that was a negative number, they wouldn't be allowed to get away with it. Okay, and D? D would be what? Process of elimination is 2. Okay, so now let's find out the function. So its absolute value is the function. Remember, f of x equals square root x. Or sorry, absolute value x. f of x equals absolute value x. Remember that. So in A, how would you get absolute value x minus 4? What is absolute value x? It's f of x, right? So shouldn't this be f of x minus 4? What would b be? What would b be? Come on, you guys. What would it be? Hmm. Yeah. Because f of x got replaced with x minus 4. Do you see how x in the absolute just got substituted? What's another? Let's do all the ones that it's substituted so we can start to see it. What is the next question where there's a substitution inside? Is it C? Is it D? Yes. This would be F of 2X. So what would C be? 2 F of X. Good. How about E? 3 minus F of X. Good. F? This one's a good one. f of x plus 3, and then minus 2. Good. g, is 1 over f of x. And h, f of negative x. OK, any questions? Okay, so we're doing 1 to 14, a.k.a. all.